Now jump into it. The final segment. It's a top ten list. Plot twist. That's what we do. That's what we do. It's our G dang list. It's top ten list. Uh, and these are going to be tips for brewery owners or if you're looking to own a brewery. Yeah. I go either way. The brewery owner tips. Tips. Uh, we've compiled real world advice from local brewery owners knows the ins, who know the ins out of making breweries work. And you know what? We listen when people know more than we do because that's sometimes, what you're to do. sometimes, yeah. so sometimes you get that hankering or that passion. You just, you got to do whatever you want. But yeah. these Trust are some get. top ten lists that we've compiled. Bada bing, bada bing, bada. Number ten: Always plan for the long game. Mm. Brewing is a marathon, not a sprint. Remember to budget for unexpected expenses. Stay patient and keep your eye on the long-term goals. There you go. Good advice. Uh, I think that's just good life advice, yeah, to be I honest. So uh, number nine, engage with the community. We don't ever talk about this. Community, community, community. Uh, involve the local community in your brewery's growth. Partner with nearby businesses. Host events. Consider donating. Uh, a loyal local customer base is going to keep you in for that yeah. marathon. The new people keep you revved and going, but your regulars are what keep you on for that marathon. Exactly. Uh, lifetime value of the customer, I believe, is what they call it ah, in the yeah. economic world. Number eight, uh, build a team you trust. It's very important to trust the person standing next to you, in front of you, and most importantly, the person that's running your books. Watch out for those guys. Um, so <laughs> your team truly is your most valuable asset, right? Like. Yeah. Defense wins championships. Hire people you're passionate about beer. They're passionate about, about your mission, your yeah. values. And it really does just create that supportive culture yeah. in your environment. But that's That would be the big piece I would emphasize on yeah. that is you want, you don't want someone that's just there for a paycheck. I get that that happens, but you, you want people in front of your line that are pumped about your business. Yeah. They care about it. They're passionate about it. They want it to succeed because the customer feeds off that. The customer knows that. Uh, and I have, like, every time I have worked at a brewery that I, like, really care about the brewery that itself, customers know it. They show it. Yep. Customers come up all the time, yep. talk yep. to me about it, like, yep. talk about how it changes when other people come in and they just don't have that passion. It For is sure. very, very noticeable. So take that little extra time to get the person in that's really passionate. Yep. It's worth it. Really totally. worth that investment. Number seven, adapt to market trends. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You know, a lot of industries have to do this. Uh, basically, every industry has to do this if they want to keep surviving more than three to five years, right? Like market trends change. People that jumped on the hazy trains, a lot of those are still doing well. NAs are the big trend right now. There's a lot of people doing it. There's mm -hmm. a reason. Uh, so yeah, just stay aware of what's going on. Maybe try not to fight it um, and lean into it. Embrace yep. a little bit and see where it takes you. Yeah. Never know. You might be really pumped where it takes you. Knowing where you're going by knowing where you've been. Away, away, we're on a course that find. Oh. That's the way of a wayfinder. <laughs> and that's just reading market trends. Number six, a focus on quality control, right? Product does matter. Consistency matters. If you're brewing shit, your product is shit. And that's not to say you don't make something good one off, but control is very important. So consistency is key. Put measures in to ensure that every batch is up to standard or it is what you say that it is. Sometimes breweries go so far as to set up labs and testing and maintaining cleanliness. We talked about toilets and tanks and taps. That's a big deal. Yeah. It's definitely worth the investment right here. Like invest time in making sure that that stainless steel is looking shiny because if it's looking ucky, I bet those beers are tasting a little ucky. Just saying. The it, it, an easy example and it with costs this, money too. Easy example with this: fast food chains. Uh, how stores are set up, national yeah. brand stores. There's a reason they're the same is because people want the consistency. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to go to any McDonald's in the U.S. And I want their, a McDonald's. Their Big Mac tastes like a Big Mac no matter where they have. When they walk exactly. into a Walmart, they're not like, how the shit do I get around this Walmart? Everything is set up the same. Yeah. People like consistency. And it also keeps you from being paralyzed by options, right? What do we do? We're often a deer in headlights when there's 20 freaking candy bars mm -hmm. on the shelf. I just want caramel nougat and milk chocolate. Yeah. Which means I probably want a Milky Way. So give me a Milky Way. You're probably at the candy aisle because you're craving something. Exactly. You probably went out to eat because you're craving.
craving something. Make it easy for me to give you my money. Yeah. That's probably the best advice. Yeah. Like I, I like trying new things, but I also understand like again, if you if you decide to go out for a beer, it's probably because you're craving a beer. If you want some food, you're if you go to a burger place because you're craving a burger. And you don't want to be disappointed by it. So people yeah. go back to the same thing they know and love. Exactly. That just is what it is. It is what it is. Number five, <laughs> diversify revenue streams. Uh, this is just great advice for any business. Uh, and it doesn't have to just be the brewing space, but explore different, different revenue options, merchandise, special events, food yeah. pairing, uh, yeah. mug clubs. Uh, all these things just help add financial stability. Make it fun. Make yeah. it unique. Do bottles. Do crazy stuff that people like do like to pay for. Because they want to feel special and exactly. keep it rolling. Have fun with it. Have a good time. Have a good time. Number four, build a strong brand identity. Oof. What do we do when we open up every interview? We talk about the origin story. We talk about the ethos, why things are the way that they are. That's your brand. That's how you market. Yeah. I'm Liz Hess. I'm a little monotone. I'm a little dark humored. You're going to get that every single time. That's not just my brand. That's who I am. Right. And that's what you need to do if you're starting or if you're already there. Get a freaking story out there. I don't care if you make it up, but you stick with it when you yeah. make it up. It's easier if it's just kind of naturally you that feels less like you have to make it up. <laughs> it's less, less effort. I'll tell you yeah. that much. Yeah. But but still, like Ronald McD McDonald came from somewhere, you know. I don't think it kids. was just a John Wayne Gacy thing. Oh, <laughs> especially when I'm like, kids. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> they're trying to get kids to eat burgers. <laughs> no, Gosh, Elizabeth. Keep up uh, with the time. Keep up with marketing. Uh, <laughs> uh, number three, know your target market. Uh, Cody talks great about this, right? He literally brews beers for yes. his audience. Oh my gosh. He's not trying to brew beers for everybody. No. Uh, our last interview with the Emporium, same thing. They're like, people came in looking for big beers and they're very sessionable focused and they left. And just like, well, well whatever. We're not, we're not yeah. going to start brewing those big beers. It's not us. It's not what we want to do. Yeah. We're sticking true yeah. to ourselves. Yeah. And the people that come in here now know, know that, want that. And so they're being true to uh, their target market. Absolutely. Which is often true to brand. Yeah. Imagine that. Yeah. Number two, invest in quality ingredients. Again, if you're using duct tape and bubble gum to make a lager, you're somewhere off there. So don't cut corners on ingredients just because you can get, excuse me, everything in a bulk price. I mean, it may have been sitting in a silo for way too long and you're getting some crazy off flavors because of it. Yeah. If you budget correctly and spend sometimes a little more but sometimes appropriate you're going to get quality ingredients and that's really important to do especially when it comes to taste differences yeah so Agreed. there there is that and number one start small and grow smart guys uh begin with a manageable setup and focus on product line many breweries open many brewery owners recommend testing your concept before investing heavily in large-scale <coughs> equipment or multiple beer styles uh Get good at what you're good at and then start experimenting, right? Yeah. Get people in and get people in the doors, know what you're good at. Yeah. And that's the MVP. Build, yep. Minimum and viable be, product. Be okay with that. Also, like your MVP, like yeah. your most viable viable player. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and you know, like you also don't want to I know when people are like, Oh, you're super busy, that's a good problem, but that actually can yeah. be really hurtful as well. Yeah. Um Grow at the speed that you can. Don't try to be someone you're not and just embrace where you're at. And if you want to get bigger, then start working on goals to get bigger. But yeah. embrace where you're at. Enjoy that shit. Absolutely. Enjoy it. More, more money, more problems, bitches. That's what they say. All right. Uh, yeah. So top 10 done. I think there's some good advice. I think there's lots of good tidbits. And for, for those that are listening that may not be that as much into beer, I think if you're looking to do any sort of startup, you can find some quality advice in this. Um, yep. This is wisdom passed down from us, from mentors and advisors and close friends and coworkers. Running like our own businesses. Running our own businesses. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I've been living the dreams for the better part of a decade because... We got some really good advice and we worked really, really hard and we thought about these things, right? So yeah. we get to stand here and talk to you beautiful, wonderful people because of it. So that's pretty cool. Well, thanks everyone so, that helped us. Yeah, along we appreciate it. We do appreciate you all. All right. Well, that's our SIP episode. That's what we got. Hopefully. E economics and beer. Hopefully our monotone was perfectly on brand. <laughs> Only for like a couple dark the, humor jokes. The topic at hand. <laughs> 